Guys, listen, 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 listen. Linda, Linda, Bob, listen. This Linda. episode, I think we're going to be spoiling some things. Yeah, so if you have not seen Legendary or Drag Race Canada or Passion of the Christ, please, please, please <laughs> stop listening right now. I don't want to ruin it, but at the end, he he doesn't make it. He doesn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your warning. Get the girls a back in town. Wow, wow. Wait, is the video Boom, rolling as well? Yes, honey, video's rolling. Mama sound is rolling. I'm in a very silly and great you mood are your, today. You're being very nice. This is very strange. <laughs> I miss you. And you look beautiful. Oh, uh, thank you. I like your little outfit. What is it? Can I can you give me a little twirl? Yeah, it's just a dress. I wear it around the house a lot. I wear it in the street sometimes if I if I put on leggings or a um or a um like a jacket with it, but it's a little hot for all that. April a- April twenty fourth is the perfect day. Da, 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 da. You just put yeah. on a light jacket. Yeah, you don't need <laughs> leggings or anything. Um, how, oh my goodness, you did it! Show me your hands. hands oh up. yeah, put them I to the camera. Acrylic. Well, you better hurry up before everything gets shut back down again. Mo, how is life with this? Like, how is life with this? I love having acrylics. I feel like a motherfucking woman. I feel so sashim and fierce. I love having acrylics. You didn't find, you don't find it just inhibiting? No, because I did it so much at this point. The first time I did it, it was very inhibiting. It was like, I was like, after like about a week and a half, I went to get it taken off. But um, <laughs> now I've, I, I, I've, I've, I've adjusted well, girl, one time, uh, me and Jacob went to the um, HRC gala, something like it was uh, glad, whatever. But uh, I can't believe Jacob, you took Jacob instead of me. And, oh my god! Anyway, so Jacob was like, "I want to wear nails," and then we so we said that we put these nails on Jacob. Girl, I don't, I don't think we made it to the car. <laughs> Jacob was like. <laughs> He was like, trying to, you know when you go to, you know when you reach into your bag and you come back with one nail on and then your nails Girl, are all in the bag. Bully, you bully, go to pull your bully. shoes on, your nails pop off. You go to touch your anything, your nails just fall. And then you you using your phone like this. I was like, "Girl, this this too much." Well, you know the evolution of nails has been very interesting. So when you left to go do season eight, like many New York queens, we weren't nail wearing girls. You were the girl no. like you would paint your nails either a dark blue or a black. So more, more more likely than not, it was a black. And you would be you, you you look at any picture of Bob the drag queen before 2017. It is his big old stubby man hands with chipped black nail polish in except, every single except, picture. Except except in pictures from Monday because I painted my nails every Monday, and then <laughs> by Tuesday they were chipped magoo. So by the time we got to look queen, it was just a wisp of a nail. There was more chip than there was nail. And then on Monday again, I would paint my nails. One so you say that every Jekyll gig except Club, Monday was a shitty gig. No, 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 no. And then one time I got called into the off to the office at Jekyll and Hyde, the restaurant I used to work at, and the and the manager's like, We need to talk about these the, you're you painting your nails. And I was like, oh, I'm about to go off. You cannot tell me how to express myself. I am queer. I am black. <laughs> and he was like, We don't mind you painting your nails, but they're chipped. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, this too you know, much. Every, every black school has a kid named Chippy. Did you have a kid named Chippy in your school that had um, a chip tooth? Monet, are you joking? I was Chippy. <laughs> Monet, did <laughs> you, you not know this about me? This is a fake tooth. I had a chip I know tooth it's fake. from third grade until 10th grade. I was Chippy and I was Blackie. Wait, okay, you had a chip to from third to... T- Wait, third to tenth grade? That's seven years. So you, ch- I chipped my tooth, and then I went and got it fixed, but your te- my teeth weren't done growing. And then I chipped my tooth again in, like, fifth grade. So I chipped in third grade, got it fixed, chipped again in fifth grade. So from fifth to tenth grade, it was chipped. Half a tooth. Ha- chippy. I was chippy, bitch. You were chippy. Oh, my God. Well, I had a similar true story. And so when I was, like, young, I was, like, went to a park or a Central Park or something with my aunt and my grandmother. And I fell. Long story short, I fell. And I and I busted my face on the ice. And this tooth, like, 
I like killed it for some reason. So like until oh, so from like yeah, they turned brown. So all my other teeth were falling out. Like all my baby teeth were falling out. But this one was like, no, bitch, I'm here. They're like, no, girl, I'm not going nowhere. I, I pay rent in this it, motherfucker. It was like, I'm going gonna nowhere. take a deep breath. <laughs> Gonna hold my head up. Gonna put your two was like I am, and I'm here. <laughs> so, so in fifth grade, I went to the dentist and they knocked it out, and then they had to cut my gum and put braces on my teeth to forcibly pull the tooth down, and that's how it finally came down. But so, uh, so fifth, so. Fifth grade and half of sixth grade, I did. I was, I had a busted ass grill, but I was never chippy. We had a kid; literally half of his, both of his front teeth were gone, and he was chippy. Yeah, I was chippy. I cannot believe you just called me out. Wow! Shots fired. Shots. If if if, if, if there are any fans <laughs> listening, if there are any fans listening, and you were chippy, please comment below. I would I want to identify all of our sibling chippies in the house. Also, if you were if you were if you were blacky, if you were also, did you have a blacky? <laughs> Uh, of course you got a blackie. I was blackie and I was chippy at different schools, though. At different schools, I was different <laughs> names. Yeah. I went to a lot of schools growing up. So, yeah, I went to I went to three or four elementary schools, two middle schools, and one high school. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Dang. So, when, you, when you change schools so often... Did you do you think do you think that that's where like your funny comes from because you were always a new kid so you're always trying to make people feel like you like like to be like really at ease with you do you think that that's where you started be making jokes? No, I think my humor comes from pain and, and I'm being serious. I think it comes from like depression and sadness and finding a way to uh, cope with that and make myself laugh. Um, but I do remember moving to Atlanta in seventh grade and. D- making a conscious decision to be the class clown i was like i am making a choice i will be the funny one and i remember like cracking my whole class up and they were just going but they were loving it they were loving my material and then i got in trouble not material like, my material <laughs> a tight 10 um oh i'm always tight for a 10 um and I, it just, it was too much. It was too much. And then I got in trouble and I was like, I'm not that girl. I can't be getting in trouble. <laughs> I, I, I'm a good kid. Uh, now you do it a full fucking stand up set in the middle. Welcome school. everyone. Thank you all for coming out to Miss <laughs> Langston's class. All right. What's up with language arts? Is it art? Is it language? <laughs> Enough about language arts. Uh, we have math in the house. Algebra one is here today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, like Justin said, I don't know much Yuki about algebra. Kid. Yuki kid, I I feel like that literally was you. Um, I I used to I used to get in trouble. I used to get in trouble for talking in class a lot. Like I would like they would call my like I mean they would call my house at least like once every two weeks. Oh, no, okay, that's I'm, I'm being excessive. Like once a month, but like that's a lot considering that you're in school for about nine months, bitch. By the fifth call. I would be so fucking scared to go home because I knew that my grandmother was going to fucking destroy me. And I was Your always grandma. talking. It was always, yes, it was always Kamika. Kamika, Kamika used to get me in trouble. There's one time while we were sitting in Spanish class and there was literally a poster of an apple on the wall. And we were just, I mean, laughing so hard. I was crying. I could not breathe. At a, at a picture of a fucking apple, we called. It, oh, oh, because my because my mom the year before bought me. And do you remember Apple Bot? Did, did you have an Apple Bot? No. It was just like a robotic Apple that like said things and it saved money, whatever it was. And like and the apple made by like, Mac or was it an actual apple? Like it was like an apple. No, it, no, it was like an actual like a robot apple looking thing. And it look and it just reminded me and Kamika of it and I, girl I mean we were laughing and I got in so much trouble and then I knew when they called my house I was like I would delay going home as much as possible but obviously it's inevitable and then girl I would just get destroyed. Well, I would get in trouble. My mom, my mom, uh, Miss McClendon, my um, uh, algebra teacher, when she didn't like what I was doing, she would call my mom and that it was curtains when Miss McClendon called my mom. <laughs> And my mom was like, you better not say nothing in class. And I was like, all right, so I won't say nothing. And when I say nothing, bitch, when she would call and roll, I didn't say here. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
Ah, of course, but you know what? They, uh, sorry, Colleen's being a mess. Your niece being a mess. Um, but you know, it's always. But again, that's why we make such great entertainers because we just had so much to say, and we were like fucking socialized, and that's just how it fucking goes. Yeah, I've always been. Um, I've always been a class clown. That is not new to me. I am. Uh, I'm just a a good time gal who loves to make people laugh. I like to use my um my gifts. To, uh, but sometimes uh, when I needed to, all of my report cards throughout elementary school said he's a great student but he just won't stop talking girl 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 and i but i but i was also like a good test taker so like i would like get in trouble for talking and stuff but bitch when i brought the test home mama it was still a motherfucking a plus 98 percent. so what's good was, yeah i'm talking but i'm still learning the fucking material and and also, at any point, my, my roommate may come home. I mean, I, I'm, you all may realize this is not my normal setup. I usually am in the basement at, in New York City, but I'm in L.A. right now. So at any point, okay. Zach might walk in. Um, oh, really quick. So when I went to get my nails done, Jenny, so Bob, so Jenny Bowie, who Gia Gunn impersonated on All Stars 4 as the nail tech, Cardi B's nail tech, Bob and I met Jenny Bowie years ago. We were just at mm-hmm. Bob's old apartment on Amsterdam Avenue, and we would, one of us was scrolling through Instagram. I think it was you, and you were like, girl, look at these nails. And I was like, oh my God, these are so yeah. fierce. And then, and then we looked at well, what, happened, what like, happened was, I, I can't remember if I had already, I can't remember if I had already gotten one, no, I went by and talked to her and was like, I'm gonna come by one day and get some nails. And she was like, okay. And then she kept like hitting me up over and over and over again. I was like, one day, let's just go do it together. But we dropped off nails. We dropped yeah, we off some nails. nails. And came back, and she kept being like, you know, I'm Cardi B's nail tech. And we kept being, I remember we were like, I was like, who's Cardi B? Okay. And, you were, like, and right. you were like, she's that girl. You were like, I think she's that girl on Love and Hip Hop. The one that's a stripper. And I was like, I don't know, girl. I don't watch Love and Hip Hop. I just want some nails. <laughs> And cut to she was Jenny Bowie. So, so she took both of our numbers. And actually, Mitch was there. Mitch, who was recording the, the video for this, Mitch picked you up from there because you went to Mitch's house to do something else. After that. Anyway, and then so I text her and I was like, hey, Jenny, like, are you doing nails? She's like, yeah, today's the first day. Come, come by. So I went to her thing. And she's like, oh, my God, Bob. It's so good to see you. I was like, Jenny, I'm not fucking Bob, Jenny. I am not Bob. She's like, you're not Bob? I said, no. I was like, I'm not. This is like the third time. When I called her, because you know when G impersonated her and I did my expose for All Stars 4 I called Jenny and I did an interview with Jenny and Jenny was like yeah she is shit I don't know why she impersonated me I was like uh uh-huh, did, did she call t- you Bob then too? <laughs> no did I she call you Bob on the ex- she, like, she was like Bob why are you doing a show called The Exchange Rate that doesn't even make <laughs> sense with your name <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Jenny is great and she was really good and she gave me a really dope hookup and I, I went so when Bob first got his acrylics done you literally you were I don't, oh first of all so if any of the nailies out there y'all know acrylics are hardcore they are a hard duty Bob was snapping the fucking nails off like they were fucking corn chips bitch like well they're like Pringles <laughs> once you pop the fun don't stop <laughs> I was like, how are you just snapping these nails? Literally every day you had to replace a nail. Well, I remember how they, I remember how a few of them came off. One of them came off because I went to go put on my shoe. And you know you put your finger in the back of the shoe to pull it up? I went to go pull it up and then it just snapped right off. I remember one of them snapped off when I was um, putting my wig on and I pulled my, my wig, I caught under the bands and the, that snapped off. Um, I broke them just like br- rushing up against the wall. I, 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 at one point, I had three broken nails, and I, I was going to get three of them fixed, and I was like, I, this can't, I can't live like this. This, this too much. <laughs> so then, um, at that point, I was like, you know, well, I have a question. Before we take our break, when we get back, should we talk about what it's like to critique Drag Race girls as a Drag Race girl? Oh yeah, we're we're gonna talk about why you fucking hate Blair Sinclair. That's what I want to know. Wait, I'm like, you and Raja, I do not hate, but we'll talk about what it. Did, Let's take a break. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about it, because I, I want to know. You know, I'm not saying that my cat is perfect, but she is the best. Colleen is the greatest thing that happened to me, and I love her. Um, and recently, I had a friend in my neighborhood, and he had to pee, and I was not home. But I have one of those, like, fancy technological uh, new age locks. I can unlock my door from anywhere. So I let him into my apartment, and he went to go pee. But what he did not know is that Colleen has a foot fetish. So Colleen was literally stuck in his shoes, and he was freaking out. He's scared of cats. And um, long story short, Colleen ate him. Um, but I say all that to say, when I have friends over, I like to make sure that my, that my apartment is nice. 
fresh and smelling clean, which is why I use Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter is kitty litter reinvented. And unlike those like regular, whack ass, traditional litters, Pretty Litter's super lightweight crystals trap odor and release moisture, resulting in dry, low maintenance litter that does not smell. And Pretty Litter is manufactured with a specialized de-dusting process, so it's virtually dust-free, Miss Dame. Girl, my favorite thing is that they ship it to you and it arrives safely at your door in a very small, lightweight bag and lasts to a month. I would say, honestly, more than a month, that's what I'm learning. Um, but that's from me to you. And um, now that I get those bags auto shipped, I don't ever have to worry about going to the supermarket in time and bringing the litter over. Like, all that is just non-existent and I, I love it. But honestly, one of the coolest things about Pretty Litter is that it is a health indicator. Pretty Litter, it changes colors when it detects potential underlying issues, such as blood or whatever it is. So I can always monitor my cat's health and you can't find any conventional litter that is better than that, girl. And that's all, period. Miss Thing, get the world's smartest litter without leaving home by visiting prettylitter.com and use promo code RIVALRY for 20% off your first order. That's prettylitter.com, promo code RIVALRY. Listen, I am messing with y'all. I love me some pretty litter. That's prettylitter.com, promo code RIVALRY for 20%. Girl, 20%! 20%! <laughs> Prettylitter.com, promo code RIVALRY, y'all. Okay, so we're back. Listen, first of all, I want to say this. I went to Bianca's place in Palm Springs. I know you had her dog. A mansion. No, it's not a mansion, but it's really nice. Oh, yeah. This, that is why that's why you and I are buying our houses this year. Because we both had a realization, like, why the fuck are we paying rent? We can literally have homes with multiple, multiple bedrooms and garages and basements and pools but instead of paying fucking New York oh my. City rent. <laughs> no, but this really confirmed. Like, going to visit Bianca about two hours outside of uh, Los Angeles really confirmed for me that I need to purchase a home. It was two hours out. She has this, like, library. She has uh, two bedrooms. Bitch, her bedroom is like an, a hotel attached to the house. She has a, a closet. Like, a room is a closet. She has a workspace with, like, a private bathroom in it. She has this garage. She has a pool. She has a jacuzzi. It was great. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing it. Like, I'm, I'm getting my house this year, but I'm very sad because we're getting our houses in different states, and that, that really breaks my heart. Yeah, ain't nobody going to Oregon. You and Jinx. Bob, you, first of all, you are such a fucking flip-flopper. Literally I a love, few months no, ago. I like Oregon. I love Oregon and Austin are two of my favorite cities to go to. And I did consider moving to Oregon. I went, Portland was, was on my list. But I've given it some consideration. And now I'm back down to two places. Um, I really love the New York City area. So I'm going to go cro cross the water um, to Joyzy. Um, or I'm going to... Um, to go to Atlanta. As a native New Yorker, I would never buy a fucking property in Jersey. Like, ew. Ew. Well, Al well Alicia Keys has a place in um, in Jersey. When I, when I did the Pride Geek with Alicia Keys, I was, she was like, Cause, you know, I live in New York. And I said, where do you live in New York? And she goes, I live in Jersey. <laughs> she was like, I, 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 live, I well, live in Jersey. Well, because the thing, because I do, so on Sunday mornings, so, you know, I Whoopi have Whoopi Goldberg has a place in Jersey. Beyonce this has a place true. in Jersey. Beyonce is not from fucking New York. Jay Z is. Uh, well, Jay Z lived there too, and the kids. <laughs> no, Jay Z does not. No, see, that's how much you don't know Beyonce. Jay Z does not live at that house. It is literally only for Beyonce. Jay Z, well, I'm sure he's a loud over. No, he's not. He won't do it because he's a New Yorker. What? Um. So Bob, don't try to don't don't try to skirt the real issues. Why do you hate Blair? You have I you do not you've been hate so Blair mean to Blair, Bob. No, 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 no. There is a rumor on um, the pit stop that I hate Blair St. Clair. It is not true. I just um, was giving my opinions of everything, and I think also there's this other narrative because the judges don't really critique Blair. So if I give a critique that is different than what the judges would give, then everyone's like. You hate Blair. And if I'm like, well, I just didn't think that her Snatch Game was very funny. Um, I thought that those jokes did not work. And then also people are like, Bob is like is, is being too nice to Cracker. Meanwhile, on the show, I was fully like, Lady Gaga, I, I was like, her Lady Gaga was not good. She looks like Gaga, but is just saying lines, just saying things that Gaga would say at some point. 
and everyone's like, "You just love Cracker," and I was like, "No, I didn't. I didn't praise her Snatch Game. Whenever she, Cracker didn't do a good job, I was like, "Girl, this was not your best work." And when she does do a good job, I say she was great, and I feel like I do that with all the contestants. She's but, but sidestepping, also, Your Honor. But, she's sidestepping. No, that is not. How was that sidestepping? So I, I, I don't, I don't think. I don't think I'm sidestepping. I don't particularly think that Blair did a good job or had a good showing on All Stars 5. And I voiced Even opinion. runways? I, Bob, okay, her red tuxedo, her prom runway, the, you and Jinx were like, that's ugly. It was, like, I can say, like, it's not for you, but saying it was not a good look is just crazy. It was a good look. To you. No, <laughs> oh, my God. To you. <laughs> to you. Um, I... <laughs> I'm obsessed with that meme to you. Um, I feel like it. I didn't like it. I just didn't like the look. I felt like she was walking in it kind of funny. Also, I didn't think it was the worst runway because when Jig said it was the worst, I was like, did you forget what India Farrah had on? So I did not also, I didn't say, yeah, you're right. It's the worst look. I just said, well, I don't think that was the worst look. I said, I didn't like that look. Also, people kill me with that with that look runway specifically. They was like, "Yeah, India just wasn't very runway." I mean, India just wasn't very prom. I was like, "Yeah, you think fucking Shea Coulee's outfit was prom? You think that like these I, girls?" Well, were I, 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 well, okay, whoa, 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 no, whoa, 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 Wait, Shea Coulee looked amazing. It was one of my favorite no, looks from the season. Me, no, let me say, okay, her look had an obvious nod to prom because and it Carrie, was a Carrie. I get type. it. So there is a prom element to what she had did so it did have a prom element to it but also any gown can be prom any gown can be prom it wasn't about the gown it was about the 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 i know i know but india but india's example somebody Mm -hmm. probably would in 2020 i'm sure someone has worn something similar to prom i am sure well based on the fact that you could wear anything to prom you're opening up to be like well then everything's prom i what i was saying was i didn't think india's look was good for the category I, actually, I don't think the look, look was good in general, to be honest, but especially not for this particular category. I didn't like it. So my favorites were um, Juju B and Cracker. And I think Juju B had the best look that day. This is true. This is true. Um, I, it I, also I, reminded I, me, it, re, it reminded me of that dress I used to have, that little ruffle off the shoulder I, dress with, the, with that, that hug right at the thigh. That is one of the most hideous fucking things, aside from your season eight finale look. That you have ever worn. We ever. need to. We need to put. Take, someone take note of the time stamp right now. This is at twenty one minutes. Put up a picture of me in this dress, and you all can weigh in on this dress. I'm gonna. I'm gonna find that, that dress. I'm gonna put on my fun Fetty wig, and I'm gonna do sibling robbery. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? Also, I think that because of drag, okay, not, well, not necessarily not, not necessarily just because of drag race, but I think we're at a time now where people are really trying to turn looks. Look at the fucking legendary. The 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 the, the, the wardrobe and the costuming in legendary to me is fucking legendary. Like uh, Megan Thee Stallion be turning the party. I live. Well, most of the time, the best look she did was the little red look. Yes, Little Red. That I am wearing that. It was so good. La Roche. Wait, whoa, honestly, whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop, stop, in. freeze. Whoa, baby. Whoa, 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 baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Are we gonna talk no, about no, 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 no. You have to do the shade. Pull- what, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was doing Shangela. Whenever Shangela's a finish, she goes, whoa, 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 baby, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, we need to talk about the fact that you fully trashed Blair on your show. And you were like, I didn't like Blair this I mean, and Blair I trashed that. Blair when she so did, why do you I hate Blair? Blair? Why do you hate Blair? I, don't try to flip it on me, mom of the past. No, I don't, I don't hate Blair. I trashed Blair when I think she, did, she didn't do a good job. But there are some times where she objectively does a great job. And you like in terms, in terms of looks, and you're like, that was shit. And she's your buddy in hell. I'm like, calm down. I mom. never said that. If she, if you think Blair is objectively doing a good job, why has she not won any challenges? If she has objectively done a good job. I said looks. I didn't say in, uh, in challenge. I said in looks. Like, so what, for what, example, what the camouflage the looks. looks the camouflage look, like y'all was saying it wasn't camouflage. I'm like, it fully, well, she's a fucking tree. But also the judges were also like, mama, no. Like it wasn't just, it wasn't just me and, who was it, Alaska that week? I can't remember. It wasn't just me and the guests. Even the judges were like, uh, I don't know, girl. I don't think this is the ticket. Like I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't on Lonely Island with my crazy cuckoo opinions. That is my favorite thing you said on season eight. Am I on Lonely Island right now, or am I, oh, am I living on Staten Island? Hello. No, 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 no. I said, I said, am I in Manhattan or am I on Staten Island? 
<laughs> I said, am I crazy? Am I in Manhattan or am I living in Staten Island? Oh, I think anyone remember that. <laughs> um, well, back to legendary Law Roach. I feel like he phones in the looks. Like I feel like everyone is like doing like costumes and La Roche is trying to like play it cool and wear like a Gucci suit instead of just doing the fucking theme. No, yeah, well, well, La Roche did come out with an outfit that looked kind of like the Riddler um, on that one episode where, but instead of um, question marks, it was money signs. I don't remember. Oh, my roommate's home. You want to say hi to Zach? Hi. Hi, Zach. Well, come close, Zach. This is a, this is my video podcast. Who are we talking to? This is Monet Exchange. <gasps> Monet. Here, put one of these in for one second. Special guest, um, Zach Noe. You guys stand right behind me because we're in like little squares. Zach is Hi, a um, Zach. wonderful comedian based uh, here in Los Angeles. True. Um, I just said three things. Wonderful comedian lives in Los Angeles. There was two truths and a lie. Hey, hey. And let's just say we're in L.A. <laughs> Will you miss this? Oh my one? god. Hate crime, 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 black lives matter, black lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, give me that. Okay. Um, anyway, um, I, I think that, okay, let's talk about law. Let's talk about law. Is law annoying? I some at the beginning I thought law was annoying, but he's definitely grown on me as a judge in legendary. I think what's driving me a little bit crazy that Law is doing this thing where it feels like he's trying to get catchphrases popping. And the one that drives me the crazy, I'm like, Mom, we're not going to start saying that when he's like, you did what needed to be done. Right. That I'm like, that's just too long for a catchphrase. And he goes, and I'll say it again, you did what needed. I'm like, can we cut a commercial? Like, I can't with you. <laughs> and then, girl, and, and when he tried to get cute and Laomi put Ooh, Laomi got him, him to in bitch. his place. She I gathered him that. like spoiler, a by the way, motherfucking spoiler alert, ponytail. If you've not watched um, uh, Legendary, then spoiler alert for me. This is your warning. But girl, yes. Law, was, Law, Law was trying to say, I just wasn't excited. Also, I will say this. Laomi is making some bold claims. I don't know how true all of these claims are. She's like, Bazaar came from ballroom. I was like, I don't, I don't know if that wait, is. Wait, wait. What's she saying? The what came from ballroom? Bazaar came from ballroom. I was like, I don't know if that's 100% true. But I appreciate the sentiment. I think that a lot of what happens in the fashion world comes from ballroom, but also ballroom also pulls from fashion as well. Everyone knows that Vogue is based off the magazines. It's a very symbiotic relationship. I will say this also, um, you know, I have to say when I first started watching the, from, from the very first episode and they brought Jamila Jamil out and Megan Thee Stallion, I was like, why the fuck are these bitches here? And then I had Laomi and um, Deshaun on Exchanger and they were saying like, she's like, you know, she's like, I'm happy that they're there. She was like, because the truth of the matter is the hip hop community is one of the most homophobic, transphobic um, groups out there. Girl. She's like, the fact, she's like, she's like, she's like, to have someone like Megan Thee Stallion as a judge on our show, that speaks volumes and it is really, really, really important. Uh, for that, I was like, you know what? That well, I did not think about it that way. I was being up in my queer feelings. I was like, fuck these bitches, but it makes sense. You know, it did tickle me. Chance the Rapper's brother. They're like, and this is. I was like, that nigga looked like Chance the so Rapper. He was so cute. He was so <laughs> cute. He was. I was thinking. He was like, I just. I've never seen anything like this. This is just. <laughs> this is so cool. I've never seen anything like this. And I was like, I don't know that you are remotely qualified. Kelly Osbourne is more qualified all. to be giving advice than uh, Chance the Rapper's brother. Bitch fucking uh, Vanessa, Vanessa Hudgens, she's, she's really into Vogue right now. She would have loved being a judge on the show. <laughs> oh my God. Not, not, yeah, not, not really into <laughs> Do you remember, who was that lady that said, Juju B, you give good mouth? Ah, uh, Rosie Perez, hello. Rosie Perez. I would say Rosario <laughs> Dawson, but I knew it was the wrong person. Wow, Bob. All not, not all Latinx people are the same. Anyway, um I'm, I'm I was surprised also, you said Latinx and not fucking what a fucking Electra from Holds is on this. She was the most Dominique. Dominique Jackson. She yeah, I am ballroom. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Mama, this is not pose. We are just, we are trying to have fun. 
<laughs> she was literally doing, that's why that's why I said Electra not Dominique because she was fully in Electra. She was like giving she was in her character. I was like, calm down, she, Mary. The gaggiest moment of all. Uh, well, okay, I haven't seen the last two episodes. By the way, if you want to talk about the win, that's fine. I don't know who won yet. Um, oh, but um, the, can I say the it? gaggiest moment? Do what you can say? It, yeah, who won? Um, the House of Balmain, which I like Balmain, but I'm sorry, I feel like Len Venn deserved to win. I feel like Len Venn should Balmain have been won over Erica. Yes, and it's wrong. She they Len Venn should have won. In my personal opinion, I, 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 need, I need to do why I didn't see the last two episodes. So I don't I don't know what what all transpired, but I do know is this that moment where like that super villain girl I don't know her get name, over here, but she was a uh, bo- she was she was runway against Michaela, and then Michaela thought thought it'd be real cute to try to throw her cape in her face, and she said, "Oh, bitch!" When she grabbed that, ga- she literally gathered her gathered her cape. <laughs> And then Michaela just stopped walking for a second. You can see in her eyes, she was like, I just fucked up. She snatched that big bag. She was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then she was like, I just got embarrassed, bitch. I just got embarrassed the house down. Down, Guess girl. You? It was everything. Yep. Yeah. Her name is her name is Lolita Leopard. That was one of the gaggiest moments. Also from that same night when Erica was uh, was uh, running against Champ from the house of St. Laurent, and then he tried to put the umbrella in front of her, and she was like, bitch, not bitch, on she this took day. It. Not, not on, on this trans watch. day. <laughs> not on my watch will you, will you put an umbrella in front of me. Not on uh, my okay, watch. Okay, can we also talk about Michaela? Okay, anytime Michaela has to save the group, she literally becomes the Tasmanian devil. Bitch, she is twirling. She's <laughs> running up walls. She is back flipping. She is the exorcist of fucking legendary girl. It is crazy. Did you see her She's walking also the like, wall? G- Which one? I, was it last? Was it one of the last two episodes? Oh, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't remember when it happened. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I didn't see girl, it. It was last Bob, wait till you see that shit. That shit is fucking... It was it's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. I was gagged. Yeah, she's Michaela is she's wild. She is this show is so good. I even really I was good. obsessed with it. Um and this by the way, I know y'all think because I'm on HBO, I am out here, this is a pay I am not this is just Bob, my don't own stop accord. lying. Guys, Legendary is paying us to do this. Bob, you don't have to Okay, that is don't not lie that to the okay, first of all. First of all, it is illegal to not I'm promote it. So don't it's, yeah, it's, everyone wanna know that. For we get sued or some shit. This is not a paid advertisement. Um, this is just because I really, really love the show Legendary, and you all have to get into it. It is amazing. Um, also, also, did you realize that on on um HBO Max as well, I showed you at your place, there there is a Elmo has a late night show. Oh yeah, Elmo does have a late night show. And honestly, you show me that the Lil Nas X episode is kind of cute. I'm kind of into it. Well, look, do you think Lil Nas X is hot? Um, I do think he's hot. I can't tell how tall he is though. Well, you can Google it. That that you can do. I feel like Lil Nas X doesn't have any gay friends. I feel like I don't never see Lil Nas X with no queers. Uh, I mean. Yeah, that is. I mean, because bitch, the truth, the tea is Lizzo carries her tribe with her wherever she goes. I'm like Lil Nas X should walk with a crew of queer people, but maybe he doesn't oh, feel a bunch of queens down at the fucking yeah, v- I, Vogue, Lizzo, in the, Vogue in the old way. She's always with... <laughs> not Vogue in the old way. Okay, so Jacob just told us that Lil Nas X is six two. So you and Lil Nas X are the same height. Lil Nas X, yeah, Lil Nas X is one inch taller than Malia Obama. Oh my God! Stop talking about that girl height. Why? It's public knowledge. Malia Obama six one. Malia Obama would dunk on um, Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you have you have you been watching Drag Race Canada? I watched the first episode. I have not watched the second episode yet. Same. Everyone's same. obsessed with everyone's obsessed with Jimbo. Even Nick, who did not like Jimbo. At I first. like Jimbo as well. Well, I need to get back into it because at first I was like this voice and this like, oh my god, I can't. Get... I was like, I don't know if I'm into this, so I have to go back and watch it again and see if I'm on the Jimbo train. But at first I was like, Miss Mary, it's an it's it's a no for me. But maybe Jimbo's turning the party. So, going into <laughs> Drag Race Canada, the queens I knew were Scarlett Bobo from her coming to the city and, like, doing your mm-hmm. show. That's the first time I ever met her. Remember when she did that um, that really cute um, Harley Quinn number? Yeah, I love Scarlett Bobo. 
Yeah, Scarlet Bobo. I knew Tainomi Banks. I knew Priyanka. And I apparently Patty said we, we worked with Juicebox at some point. I don't remember that. But I was so triggered by the fans being like Juicebox was robbed. I'm like, no, the fuck she was not. Oh, she was. She, she was the one. She was the one that went home first. Spoiler yes. alert. Sorry. Oh, Lemon. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know Lemon from New York City. No, I don't. I, I, mean, I, I don't. I well, don't. I have never met Lemon a day in my life. Yeah, but so here's I don't the tea. I, I've I've met Lemon. We're not buddies, but I I know who Lemon is. But yeah, I feel like um. You know what it was weird about uh, Canada Drag Race to me? They are what? trying to make it very clear that Brooklyn is not the RuPaul of Canada's Drag Race. Yeah. They are oh, like, down. she does not get to work the runway by herself. She does not uh, get to walk into the workroom by herself. And also, I think it's kind of weird that they have the guest judges saying, like, giving the rundown. I think that, but honestly... I think that that's, I think that that's their way of making it as fair as possible because if they made one of them do it, then you'd see them as the RuPaul. If if Jeffrey yeah, did but it, it Jeffrey should be the but RuPaul. it should be Brooklyn. Well, I well I, apparently they don't think so. Dude, what but do also, you what do but, you think? What do you think? Well, to 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 wield that power to be the RuPaul? No, I don't think it should be Brooklyn. Like RuPaul has done a lot to earn that spot, and I don't think it's very. It's just for them to be like, yeah, since 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 you're the first Canadian uh, drag drag race queen. Oh, Colleen, no! Since you're the first uh, uh, Canadian drag race queen, then you should no. I don't. I don't think that's right. I, so I. I, I also would like to I, point I, out that Brooklyn Heights is not just the first Canadian drag race queen. She is a former Miss Continental. She's done a lot of stuff. She's not just some random girl who ended up on RuPaul's Drag Race and just happened to be Canadian. Like you really diminish her whole essence down to I have, I, being you, you some are Canadian you are making girl. up a thing. I first of all, I was a Brooklyn. You literally. Heights. You you literally said. Just the first Canadian drag race. That's verbatim what you just said. Okay, I was literally in my in my in my thing, and you cut me off. You like, well, let me say this. So I wasn't even finishing what I was saying. Brooklyn, oh, what were you I gonna say? Like, I feel like I feel like Brooklyn is obviously no. Go go the, back to the part we said. Just the first Canadian. Well, you, I want to hear you, you finish the sentence. You fucked up my entire uh, uh, a train of thought. So excuse me if if I can't just hop back in and where you want me to. Not um, professional. I would say. Oh my God! Professional these motherfucking nuts. Oh, did I? Did I? Oh, and, there, and there, and there she is. The the, the professional popped out. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> um, Brooklyn. Obviously, I think Brooklyn is, if if not the most, like one of the most talented queens of season twelve, and in Drag Race in general. Like Brooklyn is super, super, super talented. She for years she performed. But which, by the way, did she start in Canada and she came to the states, or she started drag when she was here? Yeah, she she you know she started she started drag in Canada and then she got right. um a, a work visa, a alien of extraordinary talent. She was sponsored by Play, and she moved to Tennessee work um uh, so yeah so brooklyn is a very 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 talented queen but i just feel like the gravitas of like rupaul which is, which is probably what they're comparing it to as for a host um which is why i think they have one of the guest judges doing it so it makes it feel more fair well considering that brooklyn is in her 30s and rupaul is 60 years old it would be very hard for brooklyn to achieve all the things that rupaul has achieved however that being said i think out of canadians Brooklyn is the most qualified to be hosting RuPaul's Drag Race. I can't think of a Canadian more oh, qualified I agree. To, host, to host. So that's why I think she should be hosting the show, personally. I mean, and, and, and the other two judges, uh, that that those two people, the actor and the model, I'm sure they have a lot of great stuff going on, but they don't know more about drag than Brooklyn Heights does. Oh, I agree with that. And and I think combined, they don't know more about drag than Brooklyn. If you combine all their drag knowledge together and roll it up into one, Brooklyn will still know more than they do. That's why I think that Brooklyn needs... And I also think it would give Brooklyn the uh, gravitas that she needs to have a platform there because, like, quite frankly, those girls are a little too familiar with Brooklyn. Not, not uh, what's the name? Not, not what kind saying, I forgive you. Bitch. And then Can also, and who, also not who was that to Brooklyn? Who I mean, who was that? Who was that to RuPaul? Who? who uh, Pearl. Who, who, 
Pearl. Well, there you go. Um, but uh, also not literally. And again, that's like that's like another thing. Like the girls are su- are super familiar in Brooklyn. Tainomi is literally wearing <laughs> Tainomi's workroom entrance costume is literally one of Brooklyn's old costumes. So that's why having her as like the hedge judge may feel biased. Like there are factors I think that they're thinking about that it wouldn't work for her to be the host. Bitch, no one is walking into the workroom wearing an old RuPaul wig or an old RuPaul shoe or an old RuPaul fingernail or no one. None of us have ever achieved close proximity friendship to RuPaul whereas some of these girls well, what have happened personally was worked did under like, Brooklyn RuPaul or worked did. with Brooklyn so that doesn't no, work no 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 that's not true cause RuPaul did do like this you know when you bite your lip and then you go <laughs> and then she spit it out and then I picked it up and I put it behind my ear for good luck so some of us do have RuPaul's old stuff <laughs> Um, but that being said, yeah, the whole juice box. Do, do you do you think juice box was robbed? I mean, like it wasn't just like a fan thing. It was like Drag Race girls were like juice box was robbed. I was like, no, she was not. Well, robbed where? Like robbed uh, in the lip sync or robbed like she shouldn't have been in the bottom? The robbed in the lip sync. They're saying that her lip sync was fiercer than, than Lemon, which it just. I'm sorry, it just was not. No, Lemon. No, no, not. no. Lemon. Lemon did. No, Lemon did better than she did. I agree. Lemon did better. Um, <laughs> And I will say this though, what's the name? Star Sarsha, her coat that she, that, that poncho bubble coat that she made. Oh, was, I love that. Oh, I, bitch, I, I did not one. like that. I'm wig. like, can she make I me didn't one? Like the wig, I didn't like the wig she had on though. But her outfit was the most impressive thing on that runway. And the girl and who won, what's her name again? I like. Oh, I, I am okay. What? It was. What, bitch, I should have been. It should have been the bubble coat girl, Sasha, or. It should have been the scarecrow girl. I loved her look. Like she, you know, the the, the black girl that like did the. She had like the headpiece with like the straw and the hay and the picnic cloth. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That girl that won. I was like, uh -uh. and and I like Boa. Boa's like really funny, but I was like, the top with these little potato titties. No, the girl, them titties. I was like, oh no, ma'am. Jazz and Rice would not have it. I mean. Boobs come in all shapes and sizes, but these titties were like pointing out like loaves of bread. I was like, it's a it's a no for me. But I do think that so Rita Baga won the won the first episode, and I was just shocked. I thought that her dress was like really simple, and they were like, it's so intricate and and detailed. And I was like, mm. yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. Mm, eh, eh. Another another Drag Race franchise, which, by the way, you heard allegedly, I don't know if this is true, allegedly there are seven more franchises of Drag Race coming out around the world. Well, I always say, once they do Potomac, that's when it's too far. They, you know, they, they know all those Real Housewives? They were like, Real Housewives Atlanta. So, so they were like, Real Housewives Potomac. I was like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> all right. This, this too, not Potomac, Drag Race Potomac. Yeah, I mean, but to be fair, there is drag everywhere. Honestly, bitch, they need to do Drag Race Manila. I went to Obar in Manila. Bob, it is one of Obar. the greatest shows I have ever fucking seen. Bob, it was Work. like a it was like a cast of like of of like seven queens and like fifteen dancers, and then and then and then pyrotechnics and the girl do, do you remember do you remember um, Lady Gaga's uh uh MTV performance when she did paparazzi and she was flying hanging from the ceiling the blood yeah 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 bitch the girl did that she started believing and she walks into the audience then she came back on stage and then like all the dancers like swarmed her then this fucking line just shot put her out of the stage and like she started swinging the audience I was literally losing my mind it's, it's on my it's on my Instagram story highlights uh, the one that says work the world uh, Asia Australia mm-hmm. it was so good so 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 good so but, you're acknowledging yeah. right now that Manila is brilliant <laughs> Can I get you on the record saying Manila is brilliant? Can I get you on the record? <laughs> All right, let's 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 take a break, girl. I feel like sleeping is actually one of the trickiest things to do, considering how often you do it. It shouldn't be so tricky. You know, like you, when your mattress gets like lumpy and bumpy, you feel every single bump, you feel like the princess in the pea. Well, let's talk about purple. Purple is amazing. It is honestly new and evolved. It is mattress 2.0. So Purple uses this new design called the Purple Grid and adapts to your body's natural shape and your sleep style. So Purple is literally for everybody and every body, no matter how you sleep. 
Also, you know how New York is like the winters are really, really cold and the summers are blazing like you're in the desert? Well, Purple has over 2,800 open air channels and naturally temperature Nutrigel to help regulate temperature so you'll never be too cold or too hot. I mean, listen, I got mine. It is a full on game changer. Me and my partner always disagree on like whether the mattress should be firm, if we should have a mattress topper, but this way, because it adjusts to our bodies, he can have a good night's sleep and so can I. Plus, when Monet stays the night over and I can get a really sound night's sleep when she's eating potato chips in the next room. <laughs> Like my last mattress started bursting springs about six months in. With Purple, you can count on resting easy night after night and year after year because of the ultra durable Purple Grid and it will not sink or it will not lose shape. In fact, Purple is so confident in what they do and how they produce their product that every Purple mattress comes with a free shipping and return and a risk-free 100 night trial. I mean, that's amazing. Experience the next evolution of sleep. Go to purple.com slash rivalry and use promo code rivalry. For a limited time, you will get $150 off any purple mattress order of $1,500 or more. That's purple.com slash rivalry, promo code rivalry. For $150 off any mattress order, $1,500 or more. Terms apply. Bob? I have a question. Are you going to tell them when we're back? They don't know we're back. What if they're still over there? What if I just said we're... Still- Oh, I didn't say we're back? Well, yeah, we're back. Mm, you said Bob. Our fans are very smart, Bob. Um, so I am. I'm talking have a about, I'm talking about you. your fans. I'm talking about those Monet fans. Those motherfuckers slow. <laughs> you oh, you you always come for my fans. That is not cute. That is very rude. Um and not nice. To be honest, to I, met say. Them. The, I met them. The three of them are really sweet. I'm kidding. All right, go. What's your question? Do you want to say anything nice about Blair Sinclair now? Not 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 that you've had time to think about it and get some nice compliments for our sister Blair. Well, I think that Blair is really uh, pretty. I think that Blair has had some really great fashion moments, especially on her Instagram. Um, I think that her wigs are lit. Uh, Raja was wearing a Blair wig actually when we did the uh, the show and I've seen some of your Blair wigs. They were great. I would like to dispel the rumor. Blair is my Aiden Zane this season. Like last season pissed everyone like Bob hates Aiden Zane. And I was like, I just am not into what Aiden Zane is doing in this competition. But I don't know Blair. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the hell. I have a question. Me, you talked this morning and you were like, blah blah blah, your sister. And I was like, these these girls are not my I don't know. They're not all my sisters. Like I, every girl from Drag Race is not my fucking sister. I don't even know half these girls. I haven't even met I, I haven't even met most of these girls. Like they're not they are just not my sisters. I say drag race is like drag race is like a college. And if you're from my season, we're in the same class. But if you're from like a completely different season, it's like you went to the college I went to five years after I went to it. Like we're but not that, friends, we're not sisters, but, we're not we're not anything. We're colleagues. And I disagree because my point is that we all are sisters. We are coming from the same sisterhood because whereas millions, billions, at this point probably trillions of people have a college experience, only literally only two hundred people in the entire world know what it's like, and those pe- and only those only those two hundred people know what it's like for, for, for now. Who knows in in the year twenty forty there'll be ninety five seasons of, of, of different whatever, but only those two hundred people know what that experience is. So that's why so many girls feel so close together because they're like. Oh oh my God, Bob knows what this is. Like Bob identifies with my, with what it is like leaving your home as a local queen and going to film Drag Race and all the struggles, the emotions, the all this that goes into it. So I feel like that's why people feel, that's why some girls feel really close as a sisterhood. I'm not into the idea of throwing around the word family. You ever been on set for something or been like did a job for a summer and then at the, at like right toward the end, someone's like, we're family now. I'm like, no, we're not family. I do not... I just met y'all niggas. I don't know y'all motherfuckers like that. Don't be... Because when you start saying we're family, that insinuates you you can, like, ask me for shit. You're gonna get something out of this. I was like... Well, I'm that girl. This. I'm that girl. When I do... When I used to do summer jobs, I, 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 I get really close to my coworkers. I do, so... But then you don't ever talk to them again. That's not true. I still... When I used to work at the Yale Club... I Here's the question. At least how, from how every job, I've, if, if I if if I call you less than one time a year, I have I don't see you. If either one of us got married, you're not getting an invitation. If Blair got married, I wouldn't know about it until I saw it on the internet. I we we don't have each other's phone numbers. We have never DM'd each other. How are we sisters? 
bitch, my birth mother had a kid, and I have not known for 17 years. We're still fucking family. Well, We're you family. you are literally siblings, okay? I have a brother I never met. He's literally my brother. Because but I'm saying, but you probably know better. I'm sure, but I'm sure you know Blair better than you know your younger sibling, right or wrong? Yeah, but yeah, but but that person is my. Act. There's no debate as to whether or not that person is my brother. My brother, Kayla's my brother. That's not up for debate. Now, apparently, we're debating whether or not Blair or uh, India Farah are my sisters. I don't know. I do not know these girls. Also, I don't think they mean sis in the fact like y'all, like y'all came from the same pussy. I think they mean like you know sis, sis sisters in the fact that like 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 fraternity sisters like all, everyone in my fraternity that I that I'm part of fraternity with we're not all brothers. However, we are a brotherhood because we all know what it is like to do the thing of crossing into the fraternity. So I think they mean she means sisterhood in terms of a sorority well, I think of a y- network y'all of people. Be throwing that shit around. I don't claim folks as my family. I don't have I don't have no play cousins. All right. I don't have no play play cousins, none of that shit. The people, the, the my people who are my friends are my friends, and the people that I know are people that I know, and the folks I've never met are people I've never met. Would you would you Full call team. me your sister? Would I what? Would you call me your sister? Of course. Ah. Okay, Bob. Really, real talk, real talk, real talk, real talk. So, you know, right before Corona happened, I was talking to that guy, the guy who's a chef and whatever, whatever. We were talking, yada yada the, the, yada. The Uber driver. Say it again. When you were back, when you were dating Uber. I was dating Uber. Yeah, Uber, Uber Eats, because he would bring you food. You kept being like, <laughs> whenever you were dating, you were like, well, he's bringing me some pasta. And I'm like, bitch, are you dating or just seeing the guy from Uber Eats? <laughs> like, like, so, every time talk, well, he's bringing me over some capatoni. <laughs> so now, so like we, so like I, I, I kind of like deaded it because I was like, I told you, like, the language thing was, like, a really hard thing for us to get through. Like, he speaks many languages, and English is, like, one of the last ones he learned. And that's fine and all the good, but it was, like, to the point where we're having conversation. I was like, so tell me so tell me about your day. Okay, how are you? And I'll be like, oh, I'm really good. You know, like, today, like, it's coronavirus work really crazy. It's, like, really stressful. How about you? How's work? Okay, so how are you doing? I'm like, oh, my. So it was really, really, really frustrating. So I kind of did it, and we kind of, like, thought talking. So now, now Corona has, is is for seemingly, like, under control in New York, and stuff is, is assuming normalcy again. He, like, hit me up again, and then, like, we... And then he hit me up over the weekend, and then we went to a bar over here to get a drink and, like, walk to the park. And then, like, he's hit, hit me up again. And then in that moment, I was like, I really don't like this guy. And he keeps on hitting me up. And I have a really hard time telling people I'm not interested because I feel really bad because he is, bitch, he told me that he loves me. And I'm like, you don't love Whoa. me. I'm like, you don't love me, mama. You don't. You really don't. So not, I said this not weird fair thing. Mom. Yo, sister. <laughs> <laughs> How, what do I do? Help me, Bob. I know exactly. I know what you're gonna say. You gonna tell me, Monet? Just tell this nigga you don't want. You don't like him. I know no, what I you're gonna you say. To, I think you need to uh, either call him or, well, apparently, whatever you call him, he just goes, okay. I think you need to say, hey, I think that things might be moving a little fast between us, and I don't see you that way. Now, let me be clear. Uh, to quote Obama, now let me be clear. Um, do not say. <laughs> oh, that was a good Obama. Don't say like. Uh, let me be clear. Um, do not say I'm not looking for a relationship right now because that's not true. What you mean to say is I'm. I don't see you that way. That's the real tea. I just hate having had that conversation because it's like. Would so you like weird. for me to send him a message for you? You know, you can no. also book a cameo and I'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine, Bob? Did I tell you a while back me and Jacob did a fake uh, breakup cameo? Um, Bob, I was one that posted it on Twitter for you. Is that a joke? Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot, I forgot about that. Um, someone, but, said something really, someone said something really transphobic. Oh, no, it was this, this, this guy on TikTok who, who's, who does these videos with a black scent. And he's like, oh, grr. everybody, my name is somebody. He's like, they're like a black boy. And he has cameos. They're like 10 bucks. So I was going to book a cameo asking him to apologize to black women <laughs> through cameo. <laughs> he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. I, 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 I had to like, the, my cameo wouldn't say, it was like, I, you know when you click on something through Instagram and then it sends you like a super secret Instagram web browser that doesn't have any of your information in it and I was like it's, it's too much but I still want to book I want to go through with problematic people and book them to apologize 
for their problematic behavior. That's actually a really good great. idea. That's actually a really good idea, Roberta. Um, I, I just have a whole that, video of people apologizing. I think that we should do. I think we can do this. We can try to do a Patreon, a Patreon exclusive where we chat with Deshaun. Me and him are friends um, on Insta, so I can like we can like chat with him about legendary, like about the show. So I, I, first of all, he's so hot. I fucking love Deshaun. However, he lives in I LA. I thought you didn't like slim guys like that. I mean, I don't love slim guys, but I think Deshaun is fucking beautiful. So whatever. I agree. He's, you know, you you know that's my type. So I mean, I don't need any his convention. cheekbones, <laughs> bitch. His cheekbones. He got he got the fucking Jacob Ritz cheekbones. Oh, the old the old Ritz bones, girl. Yeah, he's uh, so sure beautiful. So. No, I, I, also Bianca really wants to be on the podcast. No, okay, I'm about to expose this fucking hateful ass, clown drag ass, her, bitch ass, trick her. ass bitch. So Bianca motherfucking Del Rio, every like three months, I, and I have the receipts in my phone. Bianca texts and be like, "Girl, when are, when are you when, when are you and Bob gonna have me on that on, on on that fucking podcast?" And I'm like, "Oh, girl, we'll, we'll do it like next week." She's like, I, I, "What you doing?" She's like, "Um." Uh, I might be busy. I, I'll, I'll let you know, girl. And then I'll hit her up on the day, and she'll no response. Three months later, like clockwork. When are you and Bob gonna have in the show? So I believe it when I see it. Fuck that bitch. Well, I promise you, she's not busy now. Um, that's and that's it was. She hit me up. In, she hit me up in March. In March. At the end of March, she was like, she was like, I'm, I'm home doing nothing. And then Monet, stop promoting somebody. your song. This is ridiculous. March. <laughs> it's in March. March. Feel the beat of your heart. We know. Jesus Christ, Monet has a new single. It's called March. Uh, go download it. You're ridiculous. Shameless. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> not, not Monet said it was in March. You March. are such a fucking troll. Oh my God. Get off the fucking phone. Get off the phone. <laughs> Monet said it was in March. March. Get off the phone, bitch. You are Wait, so listen. silly. So Bianca, Bianca um, sent me this. She texted me this. <laughs> what? I have to send it to Mitch so you can put it on the screen. She takes me this picture of you. <laughs> what picture of me? Show me. It's a Show me of right you now. Jesus Christ. And it just says, Why does Monet look blind? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she sent it to me. She sent it to me before. <laughs> and, and in the picture, he just is looking at the camera and you're like, <laughs> She sent it to me before. And she was like, She's so shady. That fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that shit gets me every time. Why does she look blind in this picture? Oh <laughs> shit, they got me together. Why did you? Well, why did you go to Bianca's house? Were you guys doing drugs? A little bit, a little bit of drugs. I'm not gonna lie to you. Work. I'm not gonna lie to you. Work. No, I, I was, I'm here in LA, and then she was like, "You gotta come out here and see me," and I was like, "Sure." So we drove out, and um, it was it was just really lovely. It was I got nice. flewed out? I got flewed out. Flewed out, girl. <laughs> flewed out, honey. City girls, realness. And it was just a great time. I was really, and it really inspired me to like, I, I've been afraid to move out of the city. There's a, there's a part of being a transplant, because you don't experience this because you're from New York City. But when you move to New York City from somewhere else, you always feel deep inside, if I leave the city, I'll never make it back. It's this right. feeling that I have. I, mean, I can't speak for one of like, if I leave, like, you, it's like it's like I, in my head like, like there's a waiting line to get, to get into New York City, and I have to like reestablish everything. And I lived in New York City longer than any city I've ever lived in. I lived there for 12 years. I've never lived anywhere that long, anywhere. Oh, Bob, um, you having a little moment? Oh, my little baby. But I, but 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 Mama can't afford to live in New York City, not to buy a home in New York City. I can afford to live there, but I can't afford to thrive there. And I feel like if <laughs> I had a nice place in Atlanta or New Jersey or maybe Austin, Texas, or um, Portland, or I love how you saying everywhere except you. Little Austin was like at the bottom of your list, but now it's third. If I could, if I could go to Austin, uh, uh, Saskatchewan, Orlando, <laughs> maybe Ronkonkoma, <laughs> maybe uh, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. <laughs> Andalusia, Alabama. Uh, what are some other great places I could go to? Ooh, uh, maybe a uh, Adelaide, Australia. <laughs> Auckland, New Zealand. You know what? Do you know what I tell people often? is like, you know, you know, I know a lot of like weird facts about you. I was like, you know when Bob came to Australia for the first time, he went to Perth first. Perth first, girl. Did you also know that we could move to Puerto Rico? It occurred to me. You know, you can move to Puerto Rico. You don't need any 
there's no paperwork. There's no like, you can just move to Puerto Rico. I'm not moving to Puerto Rico, Bob. I'm not fucking moving to I'm Puerto Rico. I'm just saying we could move to any of America's commonwealth. We could go to Guam. We could I'm not move to, going Guam. to Guam. Bitch, who is flying you from Guam? Could. Well, people who, who want, if you want it bad enough, honey, you'll pay. If you want, <laughs> if you want it bad enough, if you want it, this pussy bad enough, you got to pay for this pussy, baby. <laughs> Oh my god! Um, well, I've I never think... been to Guam. Do you know Jiggly? You know Jiggly did a gig in. She did Scarlet Honolulu, and then she got a gig in Guam, and then like flew to Guam. And she did some gig in Guam. They were telling me when she was there last. Have you done Scarlet? Uh yeah, and it was okay. Every drag girl is the hottest girl, nightclub in the world. Girl, let me tell you, it's the hottest nightclub in the world. It really was not. It was not the hottest nightclub because they fixed it. They put they had like three ACs in the dressing room. The stage oh, was whoa, hot. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Back in my day, girl, one time Valentina was so hot at, Scar- at Scarlet Honolulu that she melted off her like her lashes. Fell. You know this. You can be sweating. Everything will fall off, but your lashes almost never. Your lashes will go to the ledge, but they never jump. But bitch, Valentina, they were like, they fucking <laughs> dove into the deep end. <laughs> I'm on the deep end. Very Watch good. Watch as I die. Okay, that's it. That's well, all y'all get. Real- if you want the rest, get my motherfucking single March. I have my other single, uh, um, June, June coming out in September. June. It's gonna be fair. June, June. <laughs> June. <laughs> Bob, can you please well, do have- next year? Wait, can next year, can you please do a single called April and, and release it in July? <laughs> you know what? For you, no, that's a lot of work. That is too much. I keep thinking about music, but I'm always like, this is this too much. Writing music is a lot of fucking work. It's a lot of work. Well, and I've done other stuff that is a lot of work. I mean, I've done two stand-up special, yada, yada, yada. But, like, I love that stuff. And I I have fun doing music. But I'm not like, my passion, mama. You know? Yeah. I mean, Yet you another dig. Yet another big paycheck. Who's next? Tell me who's on deck. It's not Super right. It's not okay. Tina! Tina! Bring, bring me the axe. Yeah. All right. Mo, it's time for me to go. I love you so much. Uh-huh. Anyway, bye, y'all. Love you. Bye. Don't be trying to get the last word. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah. Yes. Goodbye. Okay. All right, nigga. <laughs> <laughs>